Today I thought I'd do a quick video on sectors and what gave me that inspiration. Well, I saw it in the sample questions on the official ETS GRE website. And as a GMAT tutor as well, I've seen it come up in the GMAT exam several times. So I thought, wow, if it's in the official questions, and I believe most students don't know how to do it, let me cover it. And the good news is it really isn't that bad. What is a sector? Well, it's a pizza slice, essentially. If you look at a circle, say the circle you can see on screen, that slice of pizza, AOB, well, it's a couple of slices, isn't it, all in one. That's a very big slice, but never mind. That is called a sector. It's one big slice of a circle. Of course, you can get narrow sectors and huge sectors, but that's what they're called, sectors. How do we work out the area of sectors? Why do I say that? Because that's usually what the GMAT or the GRE is asking for, or at least that's involved in the question. Let's take this specific example. I'm going to show you the formula and show you why it works. The circle shown has center O, and OB is five centimeters. If you look at the diagram, OB, the dashed line, is the radius. Angle AOB is 135 degrees. What is the area of sector AOB? I've just made up this question. In the exam, they would normally indicate that with a shaded part of the diagram. We're talking about that smaller sector, that smaller slice, AOB. Well, here's the secret. It's very similar to finding the area of a circle. Do you remember the formula for the area of a circle? It's pi times the radius squared, pi r squared. But when we're dealing with a sector, we don't want the entire area. We want that fraction of the area that that sector or slice represents. So how do we find the fraction of the whole area that that sector or slice represents? Well, it will be the angle of the sector over 360 degrees. There are 360 degrees in a circle. And so if we take the angle of a sector over 360 degrees, that gives us the fraction of the circle that we want. And we just multiply that by the area of a circle to find the area of the sector. So the area of a slice of a circle is simply the entire area of the circle, pi r squared, times the angle of the sector over 360. And just repeat, that's not a formula that you just have to memorize. It does make sense. I know I said that quite quickly, but I really think you can understand this. Pi r squared is the area of the circle. That's fine, I know you agreed on that. The angle of the sector, that 135 degrees that you can see in the middle of the circle, that represents the fraction of the entire 360 degrees that is the sector. So if we do that angle over 360, that's giving us the fraction of the entire circle that's the sector. So if we find that fraction of the entire area of the circle, pi r squared, then we find the area that is the sector because the sector is just a smaller fraction of the whole circle. That's why it works. Now you know that, you can literally just apply that formula again and again, no matter what the question is in the GRE and GMAT. For example here, we have a radius of five and the angle is 135 degrees. One quick thing to note about this particular example, as with almost every GRE and GMAT example you get, look for simplifications with that fraction. Think in big round terms, like dividing top and bottom by 30 or by 45. Here, it would be quite cool if you knew that 135 is divisible by 45. It's just 90 degrees plus an extra 45 degrees. If you didn't know that, I've shown how you can simplify by dividing by five, but it would be cool to know that. Of course, five squared is also 25. We could simplify again. This is the long way if you didn't spot that you could divide by 45. If you could spot that 45 goes into 135 and 360, what would that be? That would simply be three over eight straight away, the fraction. But this is the long route if you didn't spot that. You could divide by nine and then you get to that three over eight. And then what to do here? Well, just 25 times three with an over eight at the bottom. So that's 75 over eight pi. Not a nice round number, but nevertheless, that's the area of that slice, AOB of the circle. We did pi r squared, 
with the radius being 5, times the angle over 360 to represent the fraction of the area that is the slice. The next question is the one I've been building up to. This is the official question from ETS. So I want to see if you could answer that question now you know this method and this formula. It's a slight twist on what I've just done because there were two different sectors, but nevertheless, I'm confident my students, having watched that explanation, would be able to get it. Remember, this is an official question, so this is exactly how they'd phrase it in the real test. Pause the video and have a go yourself and see if you can get it. The figure above shows a circle with center C and radius six. What is the sum of the areas of the two shaded regions? Now, of course, the one thing here that's a slight problem is that we don't have the angle of those sectors, so we have to work that out. Can you see what the angle would be of each of those two slices? There are two ways to work it out. Either you could notice that one of those diagonal lines is simply the diameter, and that's 180 degrees. So there are 20 degrees left over for each slice. Or you could just realize the whole circle is 360. You've got a 160 being mirrored by a 160 at the bottom. Add that up, 160 plus 160, that's 320, giving you 40 left over divided by two, each slice is 20 degrees. Those are the two ways that you could work out that the angle of each slice is 20 degrees. Now you know that, Bob's your uncle, we put it into the formula and hopefully you got the following calculations. That, again, is the formula if you've forgotten it. The radius is 6, so it's 6 squared, and the angle for each sector is 20 degrees. Of course, if you're really showing off, you could put 40 in there to do both sectors at the same time. But I'm doing each slice one by one. As I've said at the bottom, always hunt for big cancellations. Notice something on the left there. 6 squared is 36. And that 36 could cancel out big time with the denominator. So don't go dividing top and bottom by two with a 20 over 36, or doing six squared times 20 and then looking for cancellations. Straight away, always be on the watch out for any cancellations you can do. Because six squared is 36, that 36 cancels with the 360 just to leave 10 in the denominator. Pi times 20 over 10, 20 over 10 becomes 2, and we get 2 pi. But of course, that is for only one slice, not both slices. So both slices together would be 4 pi. That's D. I really hope you agree that that wasn't too bad to work out this official medium to hard level GRE question. And in the GMAT, they could phrase it in a very similar way. What are the steps again? Number one, you've got to identify that it's a sector question. Basically, you're looking for the area of a slice of a circle. If you see it's that kind of question, you know it's an area of a sector question. Second, you've got to know, and preferably understand, but at least know the formula for the area of a sector. They don't give you this formula, so you have to memorize it or write it down. It's pi r squared, that's the famous area of a circle, times the angle inside the sector, over 360. Sometimes there will be parts of the slice missing. And the final tip that we covered is if you want to do this quickly, you can't simply multiply everything out and then divide slowly. You have to look for cancellations. And I can tell you having seen hundreds of these kind of questions in both the GRE and the GMAT, there were always big cancellations you can do, usually involving dividing by 30, 60, 45, 15, those kind of big rounder numbers. Anyway, I hope you like this. It was a fairly quick video just because once you know the formula and once you understand why it works, then you're the don of sectors. We don't need to do endless examples because the next example would be just the same method as the previous example. Really hope you learned something from it. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. I always read the comments and it's good to know that I'm teaching stuff that people didn't know before. That's especially gratifying. I also always try to listen to requests. If any of you have requests for topics that I could cover in the future. Really hope you enjoyed this lesson 
and see you in the next one.